Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Joelle and I resell primarily on Poshmark, but also on Ricari and Depop. And today I have a what sold video for you all, but it's gonna be a little different. Instead of going over my typical best, worst, and quickest sales of each month, we're going to talk about higher profit sales because so far for the month of August, I have had 10 sales that have sold for $50 or more. And August has been my best month of reselling, so I definitely give a lot of credit to these sales. I will say all of these sales sold within three weeks or less of listing. So they're definitely a lot of in-demand items. So hopefully you all can get some good Bolo brands and styles, especially going into this fall season. And now we're just going to get into the first sale, which is a pair of new with tags, Athleta Cabo Linen Wide Leg Pants. If you do not know, Athleta's Cabo Linen Pants are one of the most popular pieces on their website. They have the wide leg pant and they also have a pair of joggers. Both of them retail for $78. And when it comes to comps for the wide leg pant, I definitely confirmed with some recent comps. Pre-owned comps are around $30 or more. And if you have a pair of new with tags pants, you could sell it for at least $50 before those fees and cost of goods. So like I said, mine were new with tags and I paid $12 for these at a discount store that I go to in my hometown. They sell higher end items there and around once a month, they will have sales for anywhere between 50 and 90% off. So I found these pants for 60% off at $12. My final profit for these pants that sold within just a week of listing was $31.20. I would definitely be willing to pay up to around $20 for a pair of new with tags pants. I know the profit wouldn't be huge, but this particular style for Athleta is almost always a quick sale. So it would definitely be a quick flip. And for a pre-owned pair that is in good condition, I would be willing to pay up to around $10. My next sale to go over is a pair of Commando faux leather joggers. These were from that same discount store and they are new with tags. And they sold on a $70 counter offer. I want to say that they retail for $118 or $128. So I thought that was a really good deal for both the buyer and the seller. And for all you resellers out there that hate answering questions, I want to let you know that this is one of the first times that I have ever answered someone's questions about measurements and they actually ended up purchasing the item. But I had never found Commando in the thrift stores and I had recently heard from a lot of Poshmark Facebook groups that it is definitely a quick sale. This proved to be correct because these joggers ended up selling within two weeks of listing, so I'm definitely glad that I paid up for them. And I can't remember how much I paid. It was either $20 or 24, so that brought my total profit to either $36 or $32. Either way, I'm definitely happy with the sale. This next sale was by far my most profitable sale of the month and my most profitable sale that I have had in quite some time. But I sold this Eliza J sleeveless cascading ruffle gown for $140. If you've been reselling for a while, you're probably familiar with the guest buyer. They are by far a reseller's best friend because they are known to pay full price for sales. And this is where your Poshmark description definitely comes into play with your SEO. Definitely make sure that you're including relevant keywords and tags in your listing. For example, with this dress, being a formal dress, I included a lot of tags like mother of the bride, wedding guest, prom, bridesmaid, and a couple of others that I will include in this screenshot. But I think especially for formal gowns, this is really important because wedding season is year round and when prom season rolls around, you have a lot of people that are looking for this particular type of dress. I got this for 90% off at that favorite discount store that I have mentioned so many times already. I paid $3 for it and I ended up profiting $109 for this dress. All right, just a spoiler alert for these next three sales. They are all modern pieces from Anthropology that are still being sold in the store. Like almost all of these pieces that I'm going to talk about in this video, I got these at that same discount store, but I do want to strongly recommend you all to look out for modern Anthropology pieces, whether it's doing retail arbitrage at somewhere like TJ Maxx or Marshalls, or if you find it at the thrift store, definitely look out for that modern tag. I will include a picture of it. Anthropology can definitely get a bad rep. It's been around for a long time and they have a ton of different sub brands. I know I have a few older Anthropology styles that have been sitting in my closet for so long and I've definitely had a lot of sales that didn't bring a ton of profit in, but when it when it comes to the modern pieces, there is a ton of room for high profit sales because there is a reason why Anthropology remains one of the most popular stores to shop at. They are always coming out with new trends and styles, and I think that their new pieces will always be in demand, so definitely be on the lookout for them in thrift stores. So first up, we have a $70 sale, and it is a pair of Maeve wide leg pants. I originally had these listed for $90, which was pretty high, but when I looked up pictures on Google Lens, I could not find any secondhand listings. 
the only listing I could find was on Anthropology's website and they were being sold for the full price, which I believe was $130. So I did pay up for these at $12, which could sometimes be a risk when there are no comps, but because this was a modern piece, like I said, there's a lot of room for profit. So after those $12 cost of goods and Poshmark fees, I ended up profiting $44 for these pants. This next Anthropology piece was a beaded vest and this was probably one of the most fun items I have ever sourced. The details on this vest were so cool and I definitely included a lot of keywords, but this was my only sale in this video that was not on Poshmark. I actually sold this on Mercari on a $60 offer I want to say I had this listed for either $80 or $90. And like I mentioned earlier, all but one of these pieces that we mentioned in the video sold within three weeks or less of listing. And so when I do make a quick sale, I'm definitely willing to accept some lower offers for the sake of a quick flip. This vest retails for $148 and I managed to snag it for $4. So on that $60 sale, I ended up profiting $47.96. All right, the final anthropology piece that will be talked about is this pair of wide leg pants. I thought these pants were so fun and it was another pair that I was willing to pay up for even though there were no sold comps or other listings. Obviously, I was willing to buy this because it is another one of those new and modern pieces that are still being sold in the store. But my biggest reasoning for buying it at $12 was because nobody wants to pay full price these days. If I am ever shopping at an actual retail store, I am always looking up the item to see if I could find a new with tags pair for cheaper on Poshmark. So I like to think that for these three anthropology pieces, people are doing the exact same thing. If I were to Google lens this pair of pants and see the full price listing on Anthropology and see my new with tags listing on Poshmark for almost half off, I would definitely be more attracted to that Poshmark listing, especially because it is new with tags in the exact same as what you would get on the Anthropology website. So this sold on a $55 counter offer, which seemed a little bit low. I think I had these listed at either 80 or 90, but I can't even tell you all how many times I have had a listing for around the 80 to $90 range and I received the offer for around that $50 to $60 range. Every time I have counter offered around $70 and that person has just completely ghosted me and I just end up being stuck with the item for months on end with absolutely no offers from anyone. So this was definitely a tough pair of pants to let go of, especially because it was a quick sale. But after the fees and cost of goods, I still managed to profit $32, which I consider a huge success. All right, before we get into the final three sales, I just want to throw in a little shameless plug for you all that I have my first Whatnot live show. It is on Saturday, August 27th at 10 a.m. Central, and it is an active wear sale. Bids will start as low as $1, and they will be no more than $12. I have a wide variety of brands from Nike and Adidas all the way up to Lululemon. So those Lululemon leggings will be starting at $12, maybe a little bit lower, depending on how many people I have on the show. But I'm really excited for it and I think that with the low starting bids it will be beneficial for both resellers and shoppers that are shopping for their personal closets so I would love to see you all there and feel free to drop your whatnot username below whether you are buying or selling I would definitely love to give you a follow but I think next week's video will be a recap of my first whatnot sale so definitely be on the lookout for that but now we will get back into the sales. My next sale to go over is this Michael Kors tote, which sold at full price for $85. This bag sold probably within a week of listing, and I think it sold so fast for two reasons. One was the low price, and the second is that it is just a really popular style for Michael Kors, along with the print and the color. This was a bag that was gifted to me for free, so I definitely wanted to experiment with pricing the item a little bit lower to see if it would attract a full price buyer. If I were to source this at a thrift store, I would probably price it a little bit higher around that $100 to $120 range. I definitely priced this lower than a lot of other similar styles from Michael Kors, but I'm definitely glad that I experimented with pricing this bag just a little bit lower than usual because I ended up profiting $68 total for it. Next up, we have a pair of Levi's wedgie jeans that sold on a $51 offer sent by the buyer. These were new with tags and I originally bought them for myself. The dressing rooms were not open at the Levi's outlet and they ended up not fitting. And if you don't know, the Levi's wedgie jeans are one of the most popular styles that Levi's sells. If I were to find a pre-owned pair in the thrift store, I'd probably be willing to pay up to around $10 as long as it was in good condition. 
For new with tags, I'd probably pay up to around $15. I have these listed for $60 and I want to say they retail for $78. So I thought that that $51 offer was extremely reasonable. And after fees and cost of goods, I ended up profiting $40.80. This next sale was another one of those discount store finds at 90% off. I sold this French Connection dress. I'm probably mispronouncing this, but the style name is the Bantai Burnout Drape Dress. It was this beautiful color. They called it Glaze Ginger. And French Connection is one of those brands that I typically wouldn't pay up for, so I'm glad that I found it at $3. But I have always heard from other resellers that it just doesn't have the best resale value, even though the retail for this dress was over $100. But this dress actually ended up selling for my full price at $50. I'm thinking it sold for my full asking price because it is a modern French Connection piece and it is a great fall color. And this dress sold within about a week of listing and after all those fees and cost of goods, I ended up profiting $37 for it. All right, my final sale to go over is the only item that did not sell within three weeks or less of listing. In fact, it has been listed since December of 2021, but I sold these Colt Haan Chelsea boots on a $50 counter offer. I received these in one of my thread up shoe rescue boxes and it was not the best box. I had a lot of shoes that were either lower end brands or that weren't in the best condition. So I was definitely holding out hope that these boots would end up paying for a majority of the box. This is actually one of those items, like I mentioned before, that had been listed for around that 80 to $85 range. I received an offer back in the day for $55 and I thought that was way too low because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to pay for the entire Thread Up Rescue Box and still make a profit. So I ended up counter offering and that person ended up ghosting me. Since then, these boots have received upwards to around 50 likes after being relisted so many times. So when I received this $50 counter offer, I did not hesitate to accept it. I also want to say that I still ended up making a little bit of profit on this Thread Up Shoe Rescue box even before I sold these boots. So overall, it ended up being a decent box. But Thread Up's cost of goods is $5.34 per shoe. So after Poshmark's fees and cost of goods, I ended up profiting $34.66. All right, now that we have gone over each of these 10 sales, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my profits and kind of some lessons that I have learned about sourcing higher end items. So before all of those fees and cost of goods, for these 10 sales, I made a gross profit of $685. And in terms of actual earnings, which is after those fees and cost of goods, I have made a profit of $476.62. So my biggest lesson that I have learned and wanna share with you all is that if you do wanna source higher end items, definitely be willing to pay up and keep up with trends. Now I will say I am very lucky to have that discount store that sells newer and higher end items, but overall sourcing for these higher end items has helped me when I'm sourcing in the thrift store. I'm definitely more familiar with newer tags and styles. And so seeing these modern and trending items in these discount stores and even at retailers has helped me source better and more efficiently when I'm at the thrift stores. And overall, if I came across these items at the same cost of goods that I paid, I would 100% buy them again because what I have learned when it comes to retail arbitrage and sourcing higher end items is that you are sourcing a lot of in demand and trending items that are almost always going to sell fast. And another thing I learned is that brand isn't everything. For example, I would not pay up for an older French connection style because that resale value isn't going to be the best because you also need to factor in the style, what the current trend is, and how modern that piece is when it comes to sourcing higher end items. So if you do want to source higher end items, I would definitely just recommend staying up to date with trends. One of my favorite things to do is either go into a big retailer like Anthropology or look at an online retailer like Revolve. They always have modern trending styles that you should definitely be on the lookout for in the thrift store. So if you all are still watching, I really appreciate you going through these sales with me. And again, if you want to drop your whatnot username below, I would love to give you a follow on there and support your shows. And if you're interested in my activewear sale, definitely make sure to check out my whatnot. I do have it linked below and it's also Closet by Joelle. And again, that show is Saturday, August 27th at 10 a.m. Central. And now that we're at the end of this video, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you for the next video.